everyone and welcome to another uh, episode of the Atheist Experience. I'm your host Russell Glasser and joining me today is first time co-host Josh Burkhardt. Pleased to meet you all. Hey, uh, so uh, today was supposed to be Matt and um, a co-host that I won't call out by name, but uh, <laughs> Matt uh, is in the middle of a move and uh, the other co-host uh, isn't here. So, <laughs> so I'm basically the emergency backup. Right. So uh, this is Josh's first time in front of the camera uh, ha after having put in uh, a lot of diligent time behind the camera. So uh, be nice to him. <laughs> oh. um, today is Sunday, February 19th, 2012. We are a live call-in public access atheist television show based in Austin, Texas, dedicated to promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We are also available via live streaming at ustream.tv. The official Atheist Experience website is www.atheist-experience.com. The Atheist Experience is hosted, uh, is sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit organization which you can find at atheist-community.org. You can provide feedback by commenting on the official show blog at freethoughtblogs.com slash AXP, and you can also email us at tv at atheist-community.org. Check out our other podcasts, The Nonprofits and Godless Bitches. Uh, the, the Nonprofits actually has been on hiatus because Dillahunty International Studios is moving to a new location. Uh, but as it happens, just hours before I came here, I was doing a gorilla episode with my wife Linnea and uh, author Guy P. Harrison, who was Skyping in to talk about his uh, new book, which I really look forward to reading when it arrives in the mail in a few days, uh, 50, 50 Popular Beliefs That People Think Are True. Uh, so keep an eye out for that whenever we manage to get it uploaded. Um, Only 50. <clears throat> Well, he covered 50 specific reasons for, for believing in a god before, and so these 50 ah, so, cover... So much. now he's up to 100. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he's got about a million left to go. Right, right. Um, if you enjoy the show today, please come to and join us for dinner afterwards at El Arroyo, beginning at around 6 at uh, 1624 West 5th Street. And we're off. Uh, let's see... Do we have any callers lined up? None that are named yet. And so I'll uh, go into my emergency backup news that I luckily brought for today. <laughs> uh, Jessica Alquist, who has been on the atheist radar a lot. Uh, so she won her lawsuit. Uh, the, uh, the prayer banner got taken down. Uh, for the entire last week, there was some question about whether the school was going to waste a whole bunch more of their district's money by appealing. Uh, uh, and trying to get this thing reinstated, which is obvious to everyone, especially the judge, that it was unconstitutional. Uh, this week they decided they would not be appealing that decision. Uh, in Cranston, a Rhode Island public school committee on Thursday voted not to appeal a federal court decision ordering the removal of a prayer banner displayed in a high school. The Cranston School Committee cast the 5-2 vote at a public hearing to discuss a lawsuit that, has been, that had been brought on behalf of 16-year-old uh, Jessica Alquist, a junior at Cranston High School West. I'm thrilled, Alquist said after the vote. The banner put up in 1963, well, blah, 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 we've been yeah. hearing about this for weeks. What worries me is that there were actually two votes to try and fight it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but... I mean, uh, it's, it's, right, it's right there in the First Amendment. Non-idiots won out. Yeah. Cooler heads <laughs> usually will prevail. Yep. Uh, 
they they actually do prevail a, a surprising amount of the time. Like Which even is, here yeah. in the in Texas with with the school board hearings that are always going yeah. on, they usually manage to go the right way, but just barely. Yeah, and it's it's kind of blown out of proportion too by the ones that. It's always the smallest percentage that gets through. That's always the uh, ones that's just like, what were you thinking? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and those are always the most interesting ones, so they get the most airtime. Right. Um, <laughs> trying to decide what happens next, but I think we're gonna we're gonna take a call for now and um, and then put off that decision. Um, Dave in Berkeley, California. How are you? Hi there. Thank you for taking my call. I have a couple of uh, things. Uh, uh, I'm an atheist, and uh, I uh, have put together, you know, like arguments. And one of the arguments I have is that everybody's morals, in, including uh, theists' morals, come from the, come from society. And one example of that, of course, has been beaten to death, and that is that there's no there's nothing in the Bible which condemns the owning of one person by another person. Yeah. There's and not yeah, one word. that supports it. Yeah, yeah right just recently there. I heard this one theist <laughs> say, well, he <laughs> condemns it because he, he uh, led the children, out of, the children of Israel out of slavery. Mm -hmm. And I thought, God, what grasping at straws. But well, I, I mean... You know, you don't have to be against slavery in general to think that uh, you don't want the, the dudes on your team to be slaves. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's right, yeah. But anyway, so, so there's one issue where I think everyone, pretty much, as far as I know everyone, uh, thinks that slavery is immoral, and yet they cannot generate that immorality from the Bible right. or that morality. Uh, they cannot generate that from the Bible. There's another one. Yeah, and, and you will hear religious apologists uh, to, you know, flip their position and bend over backwards to defend slavery in the general case. Even oh, right, going, yeah, because it was back then. Yeah, even right. going, going but, so but, far but, as to but, say, but, well, it was no the, big but deal. But the New Testament, there's nothing, there's not one word in the New Testament that condemns the owning of one person by another. No, well, yeah, but they'll, they'll also say that was fine in the New Testament when that, in the Old Testament. Well, it's yeah, like yeah, a, What they're oh, saying yeah. is that the Bible is not for all times. <clears throat> it's just a local document 2,000 years ago. It doesn't apply today. If it doesn't apply today, why follow it at all? That's right. That's right. See, <laughs> in other words, if they would argue that, well, that was back then, then, then you can argue the whole Bible was back then, and you can just ignore the whole Bible. That's pretty much what I do. Right. Anyway, there's another one that's even more powerful, uh, I think, anyway, and that is in Leviticus. They, they essentially say if your child is abusive to you, you are to kill him. And, and then you can say, well, yeah, but that was the Old Testament. It turns out that in Mark, uh, Mark, uh, let me see, where is it at? Mark 7, uh, 9 through 13, uh, uh, Jesus actually brings up that and says, hey, it was said that you're supposed to kill your child, and you guys don't do it anymore. And, and you're, just, you're just making the word of God as nothing. Really interesting. Uh, Mark uh, 7 9 through 13. Essentially, mm. uh, the Pharisees essentially said, hey, you're not having your, your followers wash their hands. And so he comes back and says, well, hey, you know, you're supposed to kill, your, kill kids, and, and you don't do that. So uh, it's a really, really powerful statement because it's in Jesus' words. As much as I hate the that's out of context sure. message yeah, uh, yeah. thing, uh, this might actually be an, an actual case where where the context of what Jesus is saying uh, makes a difference, because a lot of a lot of the New Testament has him saying, "Oh, well, if you were perfect, you'd do all this stuff, but you're not, so you know you'd better worship me." Uh, but, but yet, in the thirteenth thirteenth verse, he says, "Making the word of God none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like do ye." So it's not, I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's out of context. I think he's essentially saying that you have, I'll tell you what happens was the Jews had made, made a workaround. You know, they had this old law, they, 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 they had evolved also and didn't like it. 
And so somebody came up with, well, a child is a gift of God and you can't do it. So that's where in the 10th verse he says it is korban, uh, which means a gift. That is to say a gift. Uh, and so therefore you're not supposed to, uh, you know, hurt your child. And so he's okay. saying that's, that's, you know, that's BS, essentially. But anyway, so I think that's a, I think that's a very powerful one because it's in his own, is his, in, in his own words. You, you might take a look at it. A yeah, well, he yeah, did also say, you know, don't like your family more than you like me. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. And so oh, yeah. On. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, so I'm, what I'm saying uh, is that there is, there, there's, there's ample things to point out to people. You have a certain set of morals, and you cannot trace them from the Bible. You claim the Bible is, is the, 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 the font of morality, and yet there's nothing in your morals today that comes from the Bible except you know, kill, lie, and, and, and uh, steal. Yeah, it's just a shame that people's moral, like they say their morals do come from the Bible, but when in all actuality it's just determined by everyone you're around. That's and right, yeah, it, you know, essentially society creates morality <laughs> and it evolves. And that's why, uh, you know, we no longer, uh, you know, do things that we, we did before, like, for instance, uh, have women as, uh, as uh, uh, property. I mean, the United States had laws in the various states, and I can't read, it's called co, it's not covariance, but essentially what it was was the woman ceases to be an individual when she gets married. Right. Yeah, that was that kind of ended in the uh, women's rights movement back in the <laughs> well, day, way well, back in the day. Well, it actually ended around, around the, the turn of the century or, or even in the 1800s, but earlier, earlier than that, I mean, there were t places in the United States where if a, if a woman, if a man divorced a woman, she had no rights to the children whatsoever. Yeah, well, there's, there's, and, and there's, these days it's kind of reversed. There's all kinds of horrible stuff in the Bible. There's there's violence. Right. There's misogyny. Uh, there's selling your daughter into slavery. Okay, yeah, so that's I mean, wrong with yeah. the Old Testament. Well, I'm saying, which I'm covers both of the things we're talking about. In the New Testament, it says uh, if a slave should obey his mother, his his his, his master, even if even if he's a uh, yeah, and mean, it also said that women shouldn't be teaching men. And I mean, you know, women, Paul has some horrible clothes. stuff to say about women and, <laughs> and, and other things. Right. And it yeah. also said that men should not go near women when they're on their period. That's right. That's Old yeah. Testament, I think. That's right. I, I'm, I'm, not, the, I'm, not, I'm not mad. But, but <laughs> yeah. In the New Testament, because they all, the, anything in the Old Testament, they'll just say, well, that doesn't apply. Okay. Well, um, thanks for calling. Okay. Bye. See ya. Uh, we have Eli in Orlando, Florida. Hi, how's everybody doing? What's up? Pretty good. How are you? Hey, I, like I don't get to live stream this, so hey, I just want to say hi to everybody. How you guys doing? Hi, uh, good. I'm a, I'm a Christian. Um, I heard you guys just talking about the only piece I heard is uh about women not being able to teach in church. That's one part I heard. The Bible uh, says um, that. Yeah. Yeah, the Bible. That's... I know the Bible says that. Uh, I believe it was Paul who wrote it. I don't have the Bible in front of me. Yeah. Um, but if you read it, Paul says this is uh, what he believes. His point of view, he doesn't say this as a direction from God. Uh, that's the very first thing you need to understand. Uh, these per well, these you know, as far as we're concerned, hope. as far as we're concerned, none of it is actually direction I, from God. I, right. Well, it's... of course, of course not. I, and, I, and I completely understand that. I completely understand that's what you believe, but... We believe that it is a direction, that these things are directions from God, that these things, that the, the whole thing is uh, from the Holy Spirit, but also they have uh, personal parts as well. You know, um, if you look at the way the, uh, the Gospels were written, from different points of views, from different men, um, and also it shows their characteristics. I mean, yeah, the character is still influenced in these things because... What we believe is that the Holy Spirit doesn't take away their character at the same time that it was written. My right, question. So why it uses their, um, if you look at the book the of Psalms. The problem with the, and the difference I mean, the, the pro, the dude, the hey, the excuse me, hey, hey, stop. Okay. Whoa, whoa. I'm sorry. Yes, you want to go first? My question is, how do you differentiate between what you consider the words of your Holy Spirit and what do you consider, how do you, differ, eh, how do you differentiate between the words of the people you say are just people and the words of your Holy Spirit when the people are uh, also saying, oh, uh, he's, the Holy Spirit's speaking through me as well? 
Because the whole okay. thing is written so by the people. Thing is, look at it the way it was worded. The very first thing he says, well, I believe I. He separates himself from God at those moments and the way it was worded. I believe women shouldn't be teaching in the church. That's what he says. You know, so does the, the Bible's so gone does through the entire credo the literature, right? Right. Literature. right. I mean, I mean, also the Bible's <laughs> also gone through so many reinterpretations that I, I think I mean I want could also have been God thinks God wants God whatever. Okay. Well, I'm. I'm uh, I wish I could. I really wish I could um, argue the specifics of that with you, but I'm not a biblical like scholar like that. Okay. Um, okay. Um, but, but you what still I do think know is that the Bible is written um, from one language, and it hasn't been lost in translation for the simple fact. How do you that know? It, yeah, that, up, well, English yeah, wasn't exactly but, the first language that the Bible was written in. It, it had to have gone not. through at least three other languages language before it, it got written, to but English, they do right? have the scrolls that it was written in from that language, and they do do take it from that language and translate it from that language to whatever language they're interpreting it to, especially the entire New Testament, which has 5,600 scrolls, which are the most in, than any other okay. copy in a historical document. We're kind of getting so off topic, because oh, whether, yeah. said that whether well, the, Bible, the Bible says, just for... You're going to have to stop doing that, okay? <laughs> yeah, tangents are not our I, friends. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sorry, what line were we on? Four? Uh, no, I think we were uh, on line it. one. No, we were on line oh, four. Oh, yeah. But, line one but regardless, whether the Bible was translated properly is kind of not at issue here compared to the, to, the, to the fact that a lot of the things it says are ridiculous and have nothing to do with the morality that we actually follow today. I, I mean, um, um, you know... Can it, I argue something there? Okay. Okay. Of course you're not going to have the same morality... Um, as Christians have, you know, um, if you are an atheist and you do believe that we are coming from... Yeah, but not all Christians, Christians have, don't the, have the Yeah, same Christians morality don't share the, the same Bible morality has. anyway. Take somebody oh, from well, Texas like, and take like somebody slavery? from Minnesota and they're going to think... Okay, sure, let's talk about slavery. Let's, let's, oh, let's, the Bible tells you how to treat your slaves. You're okay. absolutely right. And it tells you... Uh, and it, oh, but it also talks about divorce. Now, when you talk about divorce okay. and slavery, I know you're they're totally two different subjects, but certain things were instilled in people um, and were told to people because they were their hearts were hearted. Now, in this point of, point in time, God even took His own people and put them as slaves. You know, He put His own people. Yeah, He also to instructed slaves. them to Hold take on. slaves. Can just, just, please, is is that okay? Um, sorry. Go ahead. I don't mean to interrupt or be rude. Um, he took his own, his own people and put them as slaves because their hearts were hardened to him, and they disobeyed him. And when they disobeyed him, he put them. And what happens when a man or a woman was turned into slaves? So they would you be humble and willing and willing because these are her hearts. So would you be cool and with be obedient? So would you be okay with selling your kids into slavery? Now. I'm not God, okay? So neither now, were the people. So if you were a better God, person, I'm would sorry. you be? If you sorry. were a better person than you are now, would you be more willing to sell your kids into slavery? No. Again, I'm not God. I don't know how slavery. Is but it says my right there heart. in the Bible. God, yeah, believe, it, you don't yeah, have I'm to sorry. be God. Oh, you, yeah, the, but, the people who took slaves weren't God either. No, well, I'm not talking about the people who took slaves. I'm talking about the slaves themselves. I'm the slaves about the weren't God are either. This the slaves were the slaves. People who are being beaten and mistreated. If, you know, the thing is, what happens to humans when you get into this condition? Look, humans God, are more willing and are willing to humble themselves to God, are willing to believe and to look to a God because of that. But God, God is supposed to be the arbiter. God is, uh, hello, I'm going to have to put you on hold, and if this keeps okay. happening, I'm going to have to drop you. I, I, can, I can barely hear you. I'm sorry, what am I doing wrong? So, you're going on a tangent. Sorry, actually, I, I mean, you know, you're monologuing a bit, but I understand there's a problem with the phones that makes it difficult to hear when I, you're I really, trying to talk. Oh, sincerely, I sincerely apologize. Yeah. I, I'm not meaning to be disrespectful 
uh, in any okay. way. Okay, sorry. But um, God is supposed to be the ultimate arbiter according to, uh, you know, according to the actions he takes in the Bible of what is right and wrong, right? Okay, yes. So if God does some kind of action, then we can assume that he probably thinks it's right. And if God tells his people to do something, then we can all assume even more strongly that he thinks it's right. Yeah? Okay, yes. So if there's instructions uh, that God gives about what kinds of people you ought to take as slaves, then, uh, then how does that not apply to today? How does that not apply to today? Why doesn't it apply to today? Right. Because us as humans, okay, as we grow in our culture, we are now, as we are willing to take the Bible and read it, realize that God called us to mercy. Why didn't, why he, said, why didn't he just say, eventually you guys are going to want to give up your slaves because that's wrong? Yeah. Because, obviously, did we do it? Then we were, he already knew we have to have faith. Some things, no matter what. So I he was cool with I'm another gonna, thousand years yeah. of slaves. He, that didn't yeah. bother him at all. He just said, I'm willing to sit and wait around. Even but though he wasn't, he wasn't a, a, at all shy about telling you not to wear two kinds of fabrics because right. that really bothers him. But the slavery thing, like another 1,800 years of slavery, or uh, right, 3,000, right. yeah. What was, yeah. was no problem because we had to figure that part out for ourselves. The fabrics, it, it, that, that's really <laughs> bad. But the slavery, okay, what, what part wait, is it, the, wait it out. We're talking about the fabric, I'm sorry. Where does it say that in the Bible? Um, oh, look I'm it up sure. and let... Um, just for a minute. Just a minute. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, what, that's, kind of, what's sorry, really, that's kind of funny to me. <laughs> What's really funny is uh, I'm actually reminded of a uh, quote from Abraham Lincoln <clears throat> just saying, uh, Christi the Bible is not my book, nor Christianity my profession. And it, <laughs> I just think it's hilarious that uh, they try and bring that up with uh, the slavery and everything like that. You have, you have to move past the Bible to actually realize, hey, maybe slaves are wrong. All right, Deuteronomy 22.11 says, Do not wear clothes of wool and linen woven together. Do you follow that one? Do not wear clothes of wool and what? Do not wear clothes of wool and linen woven together. Deuteronomy 22.11. What? Deuteronomy 22.11. Yeah. Yeah, do not wear clothing made of wool. <laughs> awesome. I, I know, it's funny, right? <laughs> Actually, the, the one after that's pretty funny cloak. to me. Oh, I'm okay, sorry. The next, see, one, the next one is see. make tassels on the four corners of the cloak you wear. That, so that one's so you, should wear, you should wear a, a rug with tassels on the corners of it. So, I mean, here's God okay, giving so these, these very are, specific look, instructions about laws. dress codes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, these are just practical laws to help um, people establish good habits. And everyday living. But so, this is in the same, like, chapter. The same chapter. This is Deuteronomy, a book full of very direct laws. And here in the same chapter, verse 22, it says, If a man is found sleeping with another man's wife, both the man who slept with her and the woman must die. Does that sound like a suggestion to you? And, oh, you left out no, one right. Okay. Like, you must um, purge the evil from Israel. That's the last <laughs> line in that one. So, okay. so he found it worth putting the stuff about the fabrics right there in the same book. And the problem is that when this, this stuff is all mixed up together in a big jumble, and, right. and people come to us and they're saying, oh, well, you know, you just have to know how to read the Bible. One of the, one of the questions that comes to mind is, why couldn't God be a better author? Um, or okay, why um, couldn't he uh, well, have told you which laws I'm you sorry, can, sorry. Uh, which laws you have to follow, and which laws you could just be like, ah, I don't feel like doing it today, so really I'm not more like guidelines. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really more like a guideline. I really don't feel like putting tassels on my cloak. Kill the man and, his, and the woman <laughs> he slept with if you feel like it. Yeah, yeah, just, um, just, just take an axe I'm gonna be or honest. something. I'll, I'll call again next week okay. as, as I do a little bit more research on this particular part. You know, um, and I'll do that research for you guys. Um, you guys, I just, I want to say thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you. you know, okay. I, I You're awesome too. I, I, I appreciate um, the fact that you guys even bring out the discussion. You know. Well, that's um, what we're here for. 
Yeah, I want to say something. Can I just say something to my fellow Christians out there real quick? Make it quick. Um, yeah. Hey, guys, stop asking these guys what are you going to do when they're standing before God. Um, if they did believe in God, uh, then they wouldn't be worried about it. And then, come on, guys, let's ask some logical questions. Come uh, on, please read the Bible before I like you this come guy. here. I like and this ask guy. Questions. Really, I, I love you, my fellow Christians, but you guys are sounding really ignorant. Out there. I mean, sorry to be hard on you, but sometimes you got to be. All right. Um, he said it, I didn't. Yeah, and yeah, I thank did you, say sir. it. My name is Eliza. I said it to you Christians. Please. <laughs> okay. Have Thanks for I'm calling, sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys, for putting you out there, but, you know, um, just, if they're going to have the discussions with you, let them, you know, read the book a bit. Um, can I uh, say something else to you guys? As long as you keep it quick. Yeah. Oh, no. You guys, oh, I know you guys have other people. Oh, you're almost over. Can I hold on and talk to you guys a little bit after? Is that cool? Uh, we can't take up the line, but you yeah. can, tr uh, you can I don't try know. calling you, again email after. TV at atheistcommunity.org. I'm, I'm just sorry. I'm having a good time with you guys. <laughs> okay. I'm having a good time. All right. Well, do oh. feel free to call in again. See you later. Uh, uh, whoops. Bye. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Edgardo in Mexico City. Edgardo. Hello. Hey. Hello. How are you? How doing? are you guys? I'm fine. How are you? Doing pleasant. I'm fine. Fine. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering, have you ever had a call from Mexico before? Probably. I think we have. Likely. Yeah, because I've been watching a lot of YouTube clips, and I've never happened to find someone who called from Mexico before, and you know, in the shows before today. We had a Brazilian so, um, a few weeks I wanna, back. I just want to first yelling say from that I love room, your show. So I love the, the work you're doing. Uh, I'm a theist myself, but I share your criticism of um, organized religion. I think that many of their tenets are divisive and that actually promote discrimination. Uh, don't, so, don't make it too narrow. We're, we're not that keen on disorganized religion either. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. A, a lot of atheists myself, have uh, <laughs> de mixed uh, views on how it is either. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, so uh, like I said, I love the way you handle skepticism and logic. But I'm, uh, through your show, I've known a lot about how conservatism is in the United States. For example, I watched a very old clip a few weeks ago where there was this U.S. senator, I think he was from Texas, who said that they shouldn't be discussing anything related to, you know, uh, global warming. Because in the Bible, God said after this thing with Noah's Ark, that he would not destroy the earth again. So, so it was something like saying, oh, we're safe now. So, because was, God promised not to destroy the earth again. So, we shouldn't be discussing global warming. Was that Rick Perry? I wouldn't or? be surprised if it was Rick Perry. And yeah. just a few months ago, he was a serious contender for United States president. Uh, so. he, he actually, I, I'm actually following the United there. States process, uh, the Republican. And, and that's what, what probably to to call you today because, for example, I live in a very religious country. I think that 90% yeah. of our population are Roman Catholics. And, and in Mexico, I don't know, based on, on, on my country's history, uh, there was this like fight between conservatives and liberalists. And what we came to was uh, a, a very religious country, but we kind of were successful in the separation of church and state up to a certain degree. So, but in, the, so in, in Mexico, even though it's a very religious country, uh, a, a, a senator saying something like that in national TV would be really unacceptable. It would be like really, I don't know, it would be uh, Political spark suicide. a very strong reaction from, from population. And in the United States, people who express those kinds of views sometimes get funded and uh, encouraged to run for public office. So even though I consider the United States a country that has mm, been successful too in the separation of church and state, so my, my question here, or the topic I want to discuss was the fact that even though you have like 85% of, of uh, Christians in your population, mm -hmm. uh, you have somehow, or, I mean, in the country, somehow that liberalist worldview has been advancing slowly but steadily. I mean, I, I'm talking about Roe versus Wade, or for example, uh, many states legalizing gay marriage. So I wanted to know what your views on, on that are, because uh, I want to know, uh, why do you think this is that, even though most people are Christians, uh, many liberalist, you know, laws that might go against the Christian worldview have been advancing in the United States. Why do you think this is? Uh, the pro the problem is uh, 
there has been a, uh, a steady increase in the liberalist worldview, like you said, like with the uh, uh, Roe versus Wade and women's rights and then uh, equal rights for, well, no racial discrimination anyway. But, uh, but the problem is in America, every single time, every uh, group that wants equal rights has to go in kicking and screaming. And it, it's, we're seeing it again with uh, both the uh, gay rights movement and, and with uh, the aqua, eh, aqua pie, Occupy movement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just that it seems like every time uh, we try to take uh, a step forward, we take a step back, and then it, the uh, order just seems to get mixed up every now and again. I would say um, there's there's kind of a tension because it's a democracy there, but but not like a true democracy, but sort of more of a constitutional republic. Um, there's kind of a tension between popular opinion, where where uh, you know the the will of the people is generally supposed to prevail, with uh, the people who have actually obtained power. Yeah. Um, and issues like uh, abortion rights uh, and and more generally women's rights, because that is one, uh, and gay rights and uh, um, you know and stuff like that, is that these are generally people who are out of power. Uh, the same thing with civil rights for African Americans, where right. you know a few generations ago, first they were slaves and then they just weren't allowed to vote. And when you can't vote, uh, you have no you don't have any way of directly influencing what kind of laws there are, and directly so when you or have indirectly, yeah. So when you have the well, I mean, indirectly would be like a, what was it, George Washington Carver, for yeah. instance, you know, going around <laughs> making speeches to people who have power and trying to influence them that way. But yeah. if you don't have direct legislative power, um, then it's difficult to change uh, the existing power structures, uh, and so. Uh, and, and of course, as much as we'd like to say that that things are run by popular vote, in in actuality, you know, money in politics has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Uh, and so, what happens is that if you've got disenfranchised groups, it's an uphill battle to e even if uh, getting them their rights is is a popular point of view. Uh, the actual position of the legislature is a lagging indicator because uh, because people who already have power tend to hold on to it. Okay, I, I think that, that that is a fair point. Uh, I want to just to know your views on that because I think it's a very interesting thing about the United States how uh, even though constituents they are Christians and that you would suppose that they might be against things like legalizing gay marriage, there has been like a uh, like. An attempt of these uh, worldviews in, in the last years, and yeah, well, just, you might think just, that, but in reality, most uh, most Americans are Christians, while at the same time, more and more coming to the point of view that that gay people should be allowed to get married, or and and that abortion should be available at least in in most parts of the right. country. And this is more of a personal story, but just yesterday, I met a, uh, I met. I was going grocery shopping, and I met a uh, devout Christian who was also a lesbian. So, I mean, the, they have run all gam sorts of gambits, so they're not uh, yeah. mutually exclusive. Yeah, which I think somehow proves that even though people say they're Christian, if there's something in Christianity that goes against their secular morality, the one they grew up with, they sometimes tend to go with the secular morality and just try to say, okay, those parts of the Bible, uh, we don't know what they really meant when they say that, so they try to, like, uh, like go around that. I think so. And, for example, uh, your previous caller, I, I really respect his views, but I don't envy his work trying to reconcile things that I think are irreconcilable. Right. Yeah. I, I agree, and I hope they'll go farther than that and eventually realize that the Bible is essentially useless except for a few good bits mm -hmm. when it comes to deciding how we should live our lives. Another problem comes from the fact that uh, we, you start with the Bible and you start with the end point and try and make it match the point, the, uh, point of view that you have where that's not, <laughs> that's not how the world works. You can't just take you can't just start at the ending and then try and make the facts match it it just doesn't work <laughs> okay so well i think i'll let you move to move on to other colors now i really want to thank you and i want to say that 
Uh, I really enjoy your show. Keep up the good work. Uh, I actually plan to go maybe within the next year to uh, to have dinner with you in at El Arroyo. Well, looking forward uh, to it. Yeah, I, I hope I can I can see you there. We can talk a little bit more. Thank you very much, and keep up the good work. All Thank right. You. Thanks for calling, Edgardo. Thank you. Bye. All right, we're half through the show. I'm still not sure what to do because the regular co-host is here. Uh, would you rather hang around here? <laughs> I, I, I don't I'm know. fine. Guys, what? <laughs> Stick around. You're doing good Okay, job. okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for showing up, Jeff. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Um, Jim in Gibbstown, New Jersey. Jim? Yeah, how you guys doing? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? Okay, Russell, right? Yeah. I always get you mixed up with Ashley for some reason. I think you look uh, close to each other. Well, you can tell the difference because Ashley hasn't been on for years, so if you're seeing someone live, uh, it's not him. Uh, oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mostly see YouTube, so. Okay. You know, that explains Josh it. is brand new. Jeff's still around? He is in the audience right now, as it happens. Uh, I, 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 I used to think, to j think of Jeff as the angry atheist, but the more I see of him, the more I appreciate him, and I'm, I'm getting to like him very much. Jeff uh, is a good guy and, and angry when it is deserved. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love Most that. atheists aren't I really angry, they're just say, more frustrated. Here we go. <laughs> 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 or here we go again, whatever he says. Whenever somebody threatens him with hell. Oh, joy. Um, I, ha I had a particular reason to call, and I, it, it just happened to me. But uh, first, I'd like to throw some accolades out to you guys, if that's okay. Make you, them short. <laughs> you, you do a terrific job. You, you have a great show. I love it. I love Matt's debating skills. Oh, my God, that man is unbelievable. Okay. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, I just watched a YouTube video called Revealing the Ark of, or no, the Ark of the Covenant Revealed. They never revealed it. Wouldn't that melt your face off? Yeah, you shouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, I was, uh, <laughs> it's a long story how I got there. But, well, I, I'm an atheist. I'm a gay atheist, in fact. So, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I just look on stuff that I think would, would be, Actually, I started watching because I said, well, this can't be possibly true. Well, all you, the only explanation you need was you were on YouTube. You just started <laughs> clicking uh, the links to the videos that you were watching and somehow got to there. It's kind of like the uh, six degrees of separation uh, gag. Yeah, I mean, I, I know this may come as a bit of a shock to you, but some of the stuff on YouTube is a little nuts and yeah. not well supported by scientific evidence. So, um, oh, absolutely none of it is. <laughs> you know how many Kent Hovind hey, our shows videos on YouTube. there are on there? Talk about not, not, not uh, supported by physical evidence. Right. My goodness. But anyway, they, they, this guy, Ron White, I think his name was. Have you ever heard of him? Ron White. The isn't old, there a the comedian old, named Yeah, Ron I was going to say, isn't, there, isn't that the tater <laughs> salad guy? <laughs> That's probably not him. Yeah, probably one of the, not one the, same of the guy. Uh, idiot redneck comedy tour or whatever they yeah. call that. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. I, I never heard of him before. I'm surprised I remembered his name. I'm but surprised I, did I remember remembered the video. Him. He he was doing some digging over there in Jerusalem, and he 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 claims he was guided to this site. It was Jeremiah's Grotto or something like that, and so he claimed. And they started digging, and they got into a cave, and they uh, found the Ark of the Covenant and all this crap. And he, he, but we he, can't show it to you. Right. Because, yeah, it, because it will melt your face off. Good Lord, they would have never been able to show it to us. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. And what's really sad is so they said it's Ron White. I can't, get the, I can't get it out of my head that there's this uh, fat guy in a suit coat just walking around Jerusalem with a <laughs> shovel trying to dig up the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> Say get her done, but that's not no. Bad. Yeah, that's that's uh, the Larry. that's the really fat one. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, so uh, he 
he, I mean, he, not that he I says ever that talk, but. Jesus was crucified right above that, and his blood dripped down onto the ark, onto the mercy seat, and I don't know where he got all this information from. Maybe he had a vision, his I don't ass. know. It was just, uh, it's just some ridiculous stuff they're putting out there. He's got his head so far up his yeah. ass, he's going spelunking. All right, welcome to YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, except for your shoes. <laughs> Next, you should read the comments on the videos and see how much more you learn that way. <laughs> I do. Oh. I do. I'm it, kidding. It, Don't do that, ever. If the dislike <laughs> bar is long, is uh, so long that the like bar is almost invisible, it might be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's been great talking to you guys. Great right, talking to you. I calling. try to get on every Sunday, but... Apparently, I'm calling at the wrong time. I call before you put the number up, and I just get dead silence instead no, no, of that's anything. Fine. It happens so, when the lines are full. Okay, get to them. Okay. Thank you. All right, bye. Thanks. Bye. Uh, Grant in, wait a minute, line one. 29 Palms, <laughs> California. 29 Palms, California. So hey, did how you, you doing? Pretty good. Did you actually go around and count and see if there were 29 Palms? Oh, actually, they've chopped them down, so it's like it's twenty-nine stumps now. Oh, oh, that's so it's like the Holy sad. Spirit of twenty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, uh, Mojave Desert. We're right near Joshua Tree, where the uh, trees that are infamous for growing at the gates of heaven and hell are at. Why? Why would they chop them down? Were they rotting, or did they just nah, need the? Space? We just bought twenty-nine stumps because there's nothing out here except for. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And little expensive yeah, to keep water. About, uh, I found some on. Line is uh, you might be rate comfort if joke. Mm. Oh no! <laughs> Are these not appropriate? I don't know. I mean, we we make fun of Ray Comfort plenty, and we, he's been a guest. He was very nice. Uh, get, I, give me your favorite. Yeah, just just okay. one, just one. <clears throat> just just one. Yes, please. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, if you don't even have a favorite. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Uh, you might be rate comfort if your wiki says disappointingly, disappointingly a creationist, not a soft core porn star. Okay. You got a mustache. That's, That's my favorite one. All right. Oh, hey, I've got a mustache. <laughs> well, I've got a mustache, but I mean, we have the full. Oh, okay. The yeah. Full yeah. Thing. Although, granted, I could, <laughs> I could probably get some wax and have us do a little curl up there, but <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Okay, you uh, would enjoy it. Admit it. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just trying to fill some space. I heard at the beginning. I show y'all didn't have any callers. So. Oh, that's okay. We're we're rolling along just fine. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. We're doing fine. Bye. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for calling. No problem. Bye. Okay. Uh, oh, it looks like uh, Eli in Orlando is back. Hey. Hey, how you guys doing? Hi, Eli. Awesome. Um, you have you, you have a specific that, uh, point to make. Twenty-two eleven is kind of kind of pointless. Right. I agree. Um, but, you know, it says, do not wear clothing made of wool and linen woven together. And the whole point of that, again, I told you these were laws, a lot of them for practical living, is because they were uneven. So when washed differently, they're washed differently, and combining them reduces the life expectancy of the garment. So, so there was a purpose for putting it down. So basically the entire point of that part in the Bible is that wool shrinks. <laughs> Well, do not do not exactly wash <laughs> do not wash wool in warm water it, water it shrinks if if you do wash wool in warm water ma make sure to sew the sweater three sizes too large Deuteronomy is a tag well, you know, if you guys do uh, do delete well of course you don't but if God is all knowing and God knows all things you know then why wouldn't he try to help the people out with their clothing. Couldn't and he have just have waited wouldn't a few that thousand years and, and, and let them discover it for <laughs> why, themselves? Why not tell them how to make, uh, why not tell them how to harvest cotton or ma give them cotton? Or why not tell them how to make uh, polyester? Why not give them a few tips on microprocessors <laughs> yeah, while you're at it? <laughs> but the problem is uh, the yes. people of that time had wool <laughs> and they had linen. And guess who wrote the Bible? the people of that time. Mm. And it's like, yeah. it's not really hard to figure out that wool shrinks. Once it, if it rains and you start choking, that's probably because the wool is shrinking and your body heat's keeping the water warm. And then it dries and shrinks and you have to cut your shirt off. Okay, but a lot of people didn't have that much common sense, man. 
to, I mean, to, to cut your clothing off when you start choking? Me. Not a lot of not people everybody, believe the not Bible. Not everybody <laughs> worked uh, um, in the field. Not everybody, you know, they had all different jobs. Right, so but, but the point is, I mean, I mean, when you read the Bible... When you read the Bible without the assumption that it was written by God, it in every way sounds like a bunch of people who lived at the time writing down stuff that they knew. Uh, and you know, and it's we're not cri we're not entirely criticizing them for not knowing better than to own slaves when everybody already owns slaves. Right. We're just saying that that. The Bible, I mean, you know, Deuteronomy in particular, but in general, the Bible is not very impressive as the intervention of an all-knowing, all-good, uh, you, you know, moral arbiter slash creator of the universe. I, I would argue that completely, um, just for the simple fact of how the Bible was put together. Of uh, how many prophecies I don't fulfilled. care how the um, Bible was put together. The stuff it gives you as advice is terrible. Well, yeah, not necessarily. <laughs> I mean, you're you're talking about a lot of this Old Testament stuff, all right? When this were written for Old certain Testament? people okay, at a I certain mean, time, the uh, Deuteronomy I, I, again, and I'm not has a lot of yes. I'm sorry. Oh no no no. Sorry. Was, oh, just, oh, just okay. Discussing. I'm sorry. Uh, it was written for a lot of people at a certain time uh, uh, in their lives. And yeah, it was written it, by it, a lot of people at a certain time who didn't know any better than to tell each other that it was okay to own slaves. And, and that's how it happened. And the people who were writing the Bible, it's actually been proven that a lot of the people writing the Bible, say in like the named verses like Paul, they were written yeah. by imposters. So New uh, those, are, those are the Gnostic Gospels, all right? When the... When the the letters from Paul are written from Paul. Matthew was written by Matthew, Luke by Luke. Okay, you know, I do wish were, Matt, uh, I do wish Matt years. was here because a lot of the stuff you're saying isn't accurate. The stuff that's well, attributed right. to the apostles well, isn't Matt, yeah, actually them. Matt's the Bible scholar, Matt's so the one he's gives probably the best. The Bible. Yeah, he's the one you sh you'd best uh, be able to talk to. I can do a little bit, not a whole lot, but... Right. And he has the internet, so... Yeah, but <laughs> do call next week. And, and right. Matt will be back on, and I'm sure he'd love to talk more Bible with you. Oh, yeah. All, all, all right, I'm just letting you, from the research I've done, Okay. the Bible was written 30 to 40, at least the, gospel, the first four books were written 30 to 40 years after Jesus Christ uh, died by the very, within right. the very first generation of these things happen. There's yeah, 5, but still plenty of time to make up stuff Testament. about him and, and get, you know, and yeah. drum up support about supposed things that a couple of people saw. Right. But, just well, because it it's just in a, a book doesn't mean you have to take it at face value. And historically, they're accurate within the, the governing of, of that area. So when they say Pontius Pilate was there, he was there. Well, they, when they the different about, Gospels you know, say yes. that Jesus showed up in two different cities simultaneously. And who, that Jesus um, showed up in two different cities simultaneously? Hold on. Yeah. Actually, uh, well, actually um, wait, what, what part can are we you, get uh, both about? these people on you, the line at the same time? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Wait. Hold on okay, for a second. Hang just, on. just go on hold for a minute. Matt, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, oh, hey. Eli, are you still there? No, he is not. No, Darn he's it. not. And that's okay, because right. we can hang up on Eli. Okay. Uh, this, I'm, I'm busy trying to unpack boxes. I apologize that I couldn't make it down there today. Eli, if you can still hear this, I recommend that you at least freaking visit Wikipedia. When you start <laughs> saying that Matthew was written by Matthew, there's nobody who believes that the Gospels were written by the people who bear their names. That's nothing but a church tradition. It's actually written in your Bible, most likely, if you open up to the cover page of the Gospel of Matthew, it will point out that the authorship is not known. And for clarification, uh, when Russell was talking about Jesus being in two places at once, I think he's confused. I think you were talking about um, the possibility uh, of being born under Corinthians versus. No, Christ. no, I was talking about uh, after the resurrection. The one go one gospel says he was in one place, and another one says he was like a hundred miles away. Oh, oh, well, you know, once you're dead, you can be in two places. Oh, yeah, so. I forgot about oh, yeah. that. 
Yeah. Dead um, give, being dead I, gives I, you, you know, multiplicity. I only caught bits and pieces of what Eli was talking about because, like I said, we're, <clears throat> we're unpacking. But holy crap. <laughs> Look, don't call in. Don't call in and pass along your wisdom about biblical stuff and how Deuteronomy's purpose for, for, multi, uh, uh, for fabrics of different types was because they might shrink. Because that's <laughs> moronic. Right. Yeah, and the cause... point, which they tried to make, both of them have tried to make a couple times, is that it doesn't matter what the purpose was. The fact of the matter is the Bible takes some time out to tell you what freaking fabrics you should wear. And not only does it not say, hey, by the way, don't enslave your fellow man, it specifically <laughs> tells you to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eli can call back next week if he goes and studies some and corrects some of the mistakes. Otherwise, I'll hang up on him. And okay. great, great job today, guys. I'll see you later. Thank, Thank you. Matt. Well, that's word from above. So. All right, bye. I mean, literally, the speaker's <laughs> right over there. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm just proud that I learned not to look up there when people are talking. <laughs> I just focus on the cameras. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, apparently it wasn't good enough to wait a few thousand years for people to find out that their clothes might shrink. <laughs> right. It's it's you know none of that Glinda the Good. Oh, she had to learn for herself kind of thing. Yeah, no. Like the Bible was written by people of that time, so it could only be filled of, with knowledge of people by that time. Yeah. Uh. Kevin in Ontario. Uh, yes, hi guys, how are you doing today? What's up? Doing pretty good. Good, good. Um, I am on the side of uh, creation and Christianity, and okay. my question is, how could you guys um, not believe that there is a God and that he is the God of the Bible when so many um, prophecies written thousands of years ago have become fulfilled, like, to a T? What prophecies? Well, um, Isaiah 66, 8 says uh, a nation would become born in one day. I happen to know what date that was and what nation that was. I think we all know, right? It what? was uh, Can, Israel. Just, just, yeah, just humor us. Okay, uh, May 14th, 1948, uh, in the UN Council, they voted Israel to be uh, recognized as a Wait, state. So was and the so United it, States also created in one day? Yeah, so you're basically saying that the only reason it was created in one day was because it was ratified in one day. There weren't years and years of bloody fighting beforehand, which uh, would uh, which would attest to after. the cre. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, there's still bloody fighting going on today. What am I talking about? But uh, so you're just saying that the ratification is the only thing that matters in the creation of a state. I mean, there were people there saying, <laughs> "This is a state. Give us our." Uh, independence for I don't know how long before they were actually ratified. Well, there's a lot more to it. I mean, you know, the Obviously. fact that they got there, they yeah, were outnumbered by surrounding nations of pers army personnel, like 80 to 1, and they won every time, more than one war. That's um, So being you know, good tacticians doesn't make there. you magic. Right. It's, it's also, like I said earlier to another caller, it's a case of people taking an endpoint in the Bible and trying to match history to it. It just, it just well, doesn't work because you've got... Yeah, and it's not just reading into it. You've got a bunch of guys who, who have been following this religion for thousands of years. Right, and, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Trying, you know, actively trying to do the stuff that it says in the Bible. Right. Uh, you know, like we sometimes say, if the waiter brings me the steak that I ordered, is he fulfilling a prophecy? <laughs> Waiter, <laughs> well, waiter, I, mean, I like prophesize you'll bring me a steak, a medium rare. Thing like this that the whole world recognized and noticed. I mean, when it happened, there was many Christians around the world uh, praising and cheering. Yes, uh, uh, you well, know, well, sure they were. Yeah, yeah so us finally. usually the creation of a nation is pretty kind of big. big deal. It's pretty big news. So in this day and age, even even like twenty to forty years ago, uh, you'd still have all sorts of journalists coming over and saying hey, there's a new nation. We're going to have to remake the globe. Right. I mean, particularly a bunch of first world nations coming in and militarily, uh, you, you, know, yeah. I, you know, I don't want to get into Israeli-Palestinian politics because it's incredibly complicated. But uh, And we don't I have mean, enough time for you know, that. Uh, yeah, we have 
five minutes left in the show, but a bunch of Westerners coming in and saying, hey, we want to uh, do this little project that our holy book has been telling us it would be a good idea to do. So GTFO. You know, that that's kind of big news, whether or not it's got anything to do with a magic man in the sky. Yeah, well, okay, uh, you know what, it, it can be argued, and you could look at it from your point of view, but we can still see it from our point of view, too, and you couldn't, I mean, you couldn't really knock us for it, because it still did happen. And, Self-fulfilling um, prophecy. It's Well, there's more to it. You said years of it, half, uh, you know, building up or whatever. Like, there was prophecies written about things that were going to happen along with it also, too. And like, did those prophecies Jews, give specific Jews, dates? Jews would be scattered, right? And the problem also is that the, uh, that the prophecies are so vague, which prophecies have to be for people to believe in them, because if you set a, like, in the days of March 24th, whatever year it was, this will happen, it gives it credibility. Yeah, to, but I mean, to give a similar set, example, how do you feel about Nostradamus? Uh, I, you know, I don't know a lot to do with him. I think his stuff is pretty vague. Also, yeah, uh, a lot of his a lot of his stuff is similar to the Bible, but yeah, I, I I don't know. I think maybe he might be taking some of his his stuff from the Bible and just wanted to be popular and made it a little different so that he's some other guy saying. I, I don't know. He's That's not taking stuff from the Bible. They're just him, following but, the same rules. Um, but can I just mention one more thing here? All right. What about like all the things to go with it, like? Israel was a desolate desert, and it then, still and is. then there, was, there was trespassers there all these times, and they couldn't get nothing to grow. The Jews get there, who are supposed to be there, as God said in his word, they get there and everything flourishes like crazy. They supply the world with uh, it's, agriculture. <laughs> well, it's, it's called it, irrigation for a start. Irrigation and not... Also not magic. <laughs> and also not getting bombs dropped on you daily. Okay, that's well, because it, it's kind of hard for a tree to grow where in a crater from uh, yeah, and and Nepal. also the thing about a lot of these supposed prophecies in the Bible is that at the time they're uh, is that at the time they're being written, they're not being regarded as as prophecy. They're they're often uh, they often don't even refer to things that are specific enough. They they're often referring to current events in other parts of the world. Uh, I mean, heck, some of the some of the things that you're mentioning, like the Jews being scattered, are things that are also be happening in the story of the Bible. Right. And a story predicting that something happens in another part of the story is not very impressive, or we'd all worship the Greek gods. Right. Okay. Well. I, I don't know. I think you've just said what I said. I mean, the Bible says okay. they'd be scattered, they'd be brought back into their land. We're watching this happen on the news every day, and it's it's right. fulfilling. It's saying, hey, you know, God is real. Look at everything happening the way he said it would happen. Yeah, it's, you're it, saying it, it, God is real. Anyway. It's, indis it's indisputable. <laughs> uh, for you, apparently. For you, maybe. Okay. Thanks for calling. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, I'll pick up a few calls on the other side of the show, but uh, that's our great crew. Uh, thank you, Josh. Uh, thank you. Well done, sir. <laughs> uh, and we'll see you next week. Awkward stare. Yeah. Good show, though. Yeah. You kidding? Uh, <laughs> well, uh. <laughs> okay. okay. I would have what actually, I would have actually liked to get to uh, Leo. The guy, and yeah, the guy from Vienna, because okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Four. Leo, show's over, but uh, calling from Vienna, are you yeah, still it's there? A, it's a shame, Leo. I would have liked to get to your yeah, call hi, on, hi, on hi. the show. <laughs> um, uh, nice to speak to you. I know the show's over, but it's okay. Uh, I wanted to get your, your uh, interpretation on the First Amendment. Um, uh, maybe some context. 
I've been, I'm, I'm an atheist, but I've been having a debate with a friend. Uh, obviously, he's from the U.S., and we've been talking about the First Amendment, specifically the part that says Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Right. Uh, he's raised uh, three criticisms. Hey, don't cut us off early this week. Relating, yeah, specifically relating to print and school, but I, I guess it can be extended to other aspects, um, such as the allowing homosexuality or any other aspects of, that we would say might be religious driven. Um, um, it, and it, his, his comments were, the first is that it has nothing to do with Congress itself. Secondly, it has that everything it is not to do with Congress. making any laws. And thirdly, that it is not respecting an establishment of religion. Actually, and based on it's... all those three interpretations, uh, it, it is regardless of what it ought to be, but it doesn't apply. And I, and I wanted to hear your, your interpretation. Your it's actually more. funny you should you mention put? that, because uh, I actually, uh, part of my degree actually had to do with uh, the interpretation of the First Amendment, and in order to, uh, I have so to understand, I have to understand, well, I had to understand the uh, First Amendment forward and back in order to uh, actually get my media degree, but uh, Congress shall, uh, make no yeah, law respecting Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of uh, religion. Yeah, that basically or prohibiting just, the free exercise or prohibiting thereof. the free exercise thereof. Basically, that's just saying <clears throat> that Congress can, and he says it has nothing to do with Congress. It has everything to do with Congress, but there can be no law anywhere that basically says this religion uh, can work better than this religion, and it will. It's also the basis of the uh, separation of church and state argument. Yeah, Thomas Jefferson uh, wrote... I absolutely agree with you. I yeah. don't think that was his criticism. Uh, the point is that it's not a law. It's well, not, wait, it's wait, not what, a law. What's it's part of the Constitution. Laws. Sorry, what's you know, not a law? A practice or a, the, the behavior of schools. Oh, well, the even behavior of schools... Even at the public office, if it's not it acting a law or it's not following a law. The behavior of public schools is, is significant because... Because uh, they're run by the state. Right. They're run by the state and, uh, you know, the, the people oh, who are wow. doing it are employees of the state. Um, and, you know, there, there are Supreme Court cases that laid the groundwork explaining why it is that, uh, that Schools don't get to push religions on people. Schools don't get to push religions on people because they are sponsored by the state and therefore part of the state, and therefore have to, uh, and therefore, <laughs> and thereby have to abide by the rules set by the state. Right. Which means you can't push religion on somebody as long uh, as you're a state. We're going to have to move it along because we're trying to get to dinner. So, um, uh, uh, but, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, if you want to email us, we can. If it's, uh, with that specific question. Oh, yeah, okay. I could, I could do that. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. But thanks, thanks for your interpretation. Thanks for the show, guys. I All right. probably be better off being able to uh, answer it through. Yeah, Josh anyway. will definitely answer you if you email, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. Uh, Let's see, that one's gone, and William in North Carolina, I think we're, you're the last one. Okay, cool. Great show today, guys, by the way. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Sorry I, missed the, sorry I missed the first little bit of it, but anyway. I was just wondering, I've seen a bunch of the clips of child preachers, like these 11-year-olds. I'm just wondering, like, what level of child abuse do y'all think that is? <laughs> it, mm. Not really sure, because, <laughs> like... I'm not really sure if it actually qualifies as abuse, but I certainly don't like it. I, I'd be hesitant to call call it abuse, in as much as you know, my son would certainly feel free to vent his opinions on right. on atheism on YouTube if I let him do it more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ben, right. what you? your, your kid's quite talkative. <laughs> He gave me a look just now. <laughs> um, he actually wanted to host the show today. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
but I did not let him do that. I, I don't yeah. think it's abuse. I mean, I think kids can have their own opinions, but I think they're strongly formed by what their parents are telling them. Um, right. And whether you want to consider it uh, brainwashing or what, what have you, it's really, as long as it's not actually physically abusive to them, I'm not really sure if there's anything anyone can really do. Yeah, I do think that, that uh, sort of what's the harm is that you take a kid like uh, uh, Todd Burpo, you know, he, he recently wrote a book, or he, ha he dictated a book to his father where it was like, oh, I died and went to heaven and I saw grandma and heaven is real and this is what I saw. And the, the concern I would have in that case is that when a kid uh, uh, sort of reinforces the preconceived assumptions of adults uh, and gets showered with praise, he, he can tend to come away with the impression uh, that his, uh, you know, that, that his supernatural powers are a lot greater than they really are. Curse you, Pavlov! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you're gone. <laughs> uh, and I did not open up a chat room window, but, uh, you know, bye, guys. Uh, any last words? No. Nope. Have fun? Have fun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> bye.